Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are once again, ready to watch the ponies run. Let's see if we can rearrange this window. Here we go. Full screen. All right. My name's Land Turner. We're getting ready to rock and roll here with the uh, Mini Dow up in the upper right-hand corner, the Mini S&P up in the upper left-hand corner, the Russell down in the left-hand corner, and the NASDAQ down in the right-hand corner. We got uh, kind of the what's become kind of the typical setup. <clears throat> One minute chart on the Dow's in the upper right corner. The NASDAQ in the bottom right corner is uh, on the range bar 50. And then uh, we got the 15 minute chart on the S&P because we're going to put an option on that one. And then uh, on the Russell, we got it on the range bar 10. We're going to do a little day trading on that one. Matt, you're going to be in with us today to do a little day trading. I see him. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. Great to have you. Are you going to do a little day trading with us on the Russell? Or have you got the uh, range bar 10? Or are you using a one-minute chart on that one? Larry McIntosh, great to see you. Good morning. Steve Scott's in the house. we got Steve Scott. We've got Michael Bruce and the Golden Calf. we got Bruce R. It's nice to see you, Bruce. And uh, Bruce, did you did, did that help with your, with your options? How did your options do yesterday? I'm going to tell you how our options here in class did. We'll show you those. And WN Crandy, nice to see you, WN Crandy, Mr. RV Marine. We've also got Kurt Schwartz in the house and Ben Corpus, ready to watch the ponies run with us, along with Gary Thomas. How you guys all doing, everybody? It's great to have you. We've got more guys in the class than what's popped up their little names. If you guys want to pop up your little names, I'll make you famous. All right, here we go. Let's watch this baby run. What have we got? 720, 728 in 36 seconds. 728, 27. So we got a couple minutes here. Let's pull up our news. What do we got for news today? Almost nothing. Although we do have Fed William. Fed Williams is going to speak today at 115. We had a Fed speak yesterday and it moved the market. Had a nice little afternoon run. Um, so we might get another one today. One fifteen. market closes at two. So he's going to be during power hour. Yesterday was a little nicer. He's a little earlier and, uh, market had a nice, nice afternoon. Uh, hopefully you guys were stuck around for some of that and had the opportunity to put a couple of dollars in the bank. Where did we end up yesterday? Well, let's see. Where's our spreadsheet? How come I'm having a hard time finding my spreadsheet? I don't know what happened to my spreadsheet. Oh, here it is. There's the spreadsheet. What have we got? 18 seconds till the bell opens now? Because I took so long. 29, yep, yeah, I don't want to cover this up while we got the spreadsheet, spreadsheet covering it up. Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, let the ponies run. Here they go. Three, two, one, bell is going to open. There it goes. Pop, 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 pop. Land, just jump in on the open. Why don't you just jump in on the open, especially down there on that NASDAQ 50. Look, it wants to run higher. You just jump in. Just jump in. Just, just do it. Well, good thing we didn't do it on the Russell because, look, it would have just jumped in long on the Russell. We've got our hiney handed to us. There we go. Dow's starting to flush. Good thing we didn't just jump in. Just jump in. Just jump in. Action. It's all about the action. It's not all about the action. It's all about making money. Sometimes making money is boring. I know. You just sit and watch for hours sometimes. But just wait for the perfect setup. I'm a little bit more cavalier. I have a tendency to jump in and out a little bit more. You want to watch paint dry, go trade with David Duty. That guy will sit there for two hours to take one trade, and then he doesn't even do it himself. He just does it with the autopilot. Now, that's boring, but he makes money. So that's the key. That's the lesson here. Don't get all the, this is not a video game. I mean, it can be. Kind of feels like a video game, doesn't it? I always tell my sons, if they would spend as much time 
learning how to trade the markets as they do learning how to trade those video games they play, they'd be rich, rich, rich beyond their wildest dreams. Because they master those video games, those kids, don't they? Man, they can play those video games. They can beat up those bad guys. They can collect the dollars. They can collect the, the gold. They're really good at it. I wish I was half as good at playing this game as they are at playing theirs. Look at that NASDAQ popping up. Look at that Dow. Now, Lan, you should have got into the Dow on the open. I told you to get into the Dow on the open, and then you said, no, look, it's flushing back down. Well, that's why we use options on the open, but we didn't do that this time. We got in here a little bit late. We got a little green. Then we can we can come over here. Trade, trade, trade. Quick, quick, quick. A little slow on the uptake, but that's, well, <laughs> I thought I was going to take a long position here on the, quick long position here on the Russell breaking above the VWAP. Well, we still may be okay with this one. We got the little rally. See the little rally here? Uh, arrows. Got the little, oh, arrows. Come on, man. Got the little rally here, the little pullback. Now it's a continuation of that uptrend. We'll see if that happens. I've only got one on because I don't trust it. Oh, I don't have a stop, though, and it's already killing us. Ugh. Land, trading without stops. Well, I hit the wrong button. I hit the market button up here instead of the QOCO button, which has a attached stop. Well, now that's a failure, so you ought to take a short right here, right? Well... Not necessarily. Look, it's going red, green, red, green, red, green. We're not getting anything out of this thing. Let's bring it full screen because it's the only one we're going to trade right now. Let's pull it up. Everybody can see a little better. We got a little triangle formation coming on. We all recognize that, right? We got this little thing. Uh, it's not very pretty on the bottom side. It's almost like this. What the heck is that pattern? It ain't one. It just ain't one. But we're looking for it to break above this high right here. Land, quit teaching and just trade. Oh, we're here to learn. So if it breaks above there, that would be our buy signal. If you wanted to, you could put a, a stop order right there, buy stop. And it would, as it passed through there, whoosh, take our order and go. You got your order a little bit below the line. Why are you doing that? Well, because there's other people who have their order sitting right on the line. And if I have it just a little bit before the line, it'll catch it and then go. Well, you didn't get in. Look, you're missing it. Well, that's because it's going down. I don't want to get in if it's not going up. It's just doing nothing. Not going to get no action here. Well, you should be short. It's breaking below the yellow line. Take that one. Why are you so anxious to get me into the market? Because cause it's fun. We're not here to have fun. We're here to make money. That's not, not the way you trade. You got to have patience wait for the right setups well that was a good setup it went green to red and you didn't take it i told you to take that short right there i know you did you're so smart i wish i'd just do everything you said to do now you're just gonna watch it run away without you again i told you It didn't really feel like a very good setup to me. It only was a good setup to the upside. I didn't see a good setup to the downside. It's a failed pattern land. Anytime a pattern fails, that's the best pattern in the other direction. How many times have you said that? How many times have I heard you say that? And you don't even listen to yourself sometimes. I know. I'm my worst own critic. Uh, there's our support level there. We got a little support level down here. Let's go back and see what everything else is doing. Oh, my gosh. Look at the Dow. Oh, my gosh. Look at the S&P. Oh, my gosh. Look at the NASDAQ. Lan, you're down here dinking around with these little Russell, and then these other markets are taking off without you. I told you to get in long on the Dow. Well, it had that bar right there. That was a scary bar. I didn't think that bar was going to be good for us. I thought that was going to be a telltale sign. We got another little bar right there. Look at that thing. Man, what would it look like if you put the Dow on the rust on the range bar 10? You want to look at it on the range bar 10? Maybe. Oh, look. Look at the Russell. See? See? Right back to where we started. Is it going to break higher? Do we want to get a long position in here? It's breaking above that line you drew, Lan. It's breaking. It's testing it right there. It's testing it. You got a previous high here. You got a previous high here. 
you missed the turnaround. Look, went from red to green. Got an arrow. Well, let's give it a second and see what it's going to do. You're over here myopically looking at the Russell. You're missing what's going on on the other charts. I know, I know, I know. I know. Look at that S&P. That's a 15-minute chart on the S&P. Why wouldn't we have our option on? Ah, can't do everything at once. I'm just one guy. Why don't you have the autopilot turning on the NASDAQ? Again, I, I'm... Ah. I've only got two hands and one click finger. Can only do so much at once. Okay, here we go. Go get an option on over there on the S and P. Then I'll miss what's going on on the on the range. Russell, and you get mad at me. I jump all over the place and then I don't do anything good. I'm doing one thing bad. I do ten things bad and not one thing good. I have to remember. Just focus on doing one thing and don't feel FOMO on the other markets. <clears throat> Just do one thing good. Just do one thing really good. That's all you have to do in these markets. You don't have to trade everything. You don't have to do it all. We're doing it all here just because we can, but don't try and do everything all at once. Just focus on doing one thing really super well. And that would be just right now. We just want to watch the wrestle. Okay. But you're missing everything on the NASDAQ. You're missing everything on the Dow. You're missing everything on the S&P when the Russell's not doing anything. I know, but our strategy is simple. We don't need to do everything. But everybody wants to see you do everything. All right, let's go do some other stuff then. Let's go turn on <clears throat> the uh, autopilot. Let's change it this time. Let's go back. Yesterday, we traded the, the Bulls and Bears autopilot. And you know what? That's what I wanted to show you here. It did us good. We put on those, uh, we got one order. We got one trade, and it came in after the hours. So, actually, this is the one. We got 300 We ended up with $310 yesterday. Lan, how can you end up with $310 yesterday? Well, that was because we put on two options, which straddle and a strangle, and we actually put on two straddles, right? The first one I took off accidentally with 20 bucks, and then the other one, straddle and strangle, both of them paid off. Bruce, did both of your straddle and strangles pay off? So both of them went up. We only put it like, what, was one of them like 15% and the other one was 20%? So they both did well. And then we also had one of uh, the autopilot strategies paid off. So that paid off too. So that's how we ended up with $310. That's what we did yesterday. And then in the afternoon, I was teaching another class with some guys during the Fed speak. And we made $1,385. You'll notice it on my new spreadsheet. I got those broke out. So this is now going to be our win-loss column. And this is our win-loss column after hours or so things that I do when I'm teaching that's not during the morning YouTube session. So I should probably even morning here. We can even YouTube the YouTube channel. Oh, what was that? That's in the wrong place. YouTube right here. So that's our YouTube training. This is our off hours. This would be if I'm teaching another class. And then, of course, I have my real money account when I trade my real money, too. But I've been teaching so much lately. I haven't had a chance to do a lot of real money trading. But I've done some, and I've had some good luck. Had uh, three winning days and one losing day. So I'm okay so far on my real money. But this is this is all the, the education stuff, and that's what we're here for. So that was a really good day. I wish that would have been real money, but it wasn't. It was in the demo. I was teaching a class, and... We caught that Fed spake and ended up with $1,385. So that was a nice day yesterday. So, yes, we did have some payoffs yesterday, the YouTube stuff. So I broke that spreadsheet apart so you can see the differences. All right. What's going on with NASDAQ? Oh, we're going to – let's change it up a little bit. Let's come in here. And we're just going to take off the bulls and bears because we traded bulls and bears yesterday. Did you have any winnings on – Bulls and Bears yesterday, Lan? Yes, I just told you I did. I had one. Took one trade, and then once made that one trade, I had two contracts made, so it made 200 and something dollars, and uh, then I shut it off. Why'd you shut it off? Well, because it was for the YouTube channel. I just left it running as long as the options were running. Once the options were done, I took off this too. All right, so what are you doing? You're not paying attention. Get your act together. Chart overlay, ATR, ATR, if we're going to do this, we don't need, I'm not going to take them, well, David Duty uses the moving averages, 
what does he use? Moving averages, he uses 50, right? So let's run the old David Duty strategy. Uh, so exponential. I think that's good right there. Well, <laughs> range next, NASDAQ's not really doing anything. You're not going to get any trades because the, oh, we got to change the ATR. ATR, let's change that down to one and one. We could even do it a little more aggressive. 0.9. Sometimes I like to do 0.9. Why do you like to do 0.9, man? Because it gets you in earlier. And since this is just scalp and scalp, it's not scalp and trail. We don't need to trail. We just scalp so we can get in earlier. Sometimes you get in one bar earlier. Yeah, but you get in a lot of extra bars. I know. So it's kind of a game you have to play. Let's put it on eight this time. So we're going to put it on an ATR period of one and a stop factor of 0.8. So it's really pretty getting pretty aggressive down there. All right. And then we've got our moving average is set in here to a 50, 50 exponential. Now we're going to come over to our autopilot and we're going to come in and we're going to go NASDAQ scalp and we're going to come in. And it says that I didn't have the right indicator because it was set for bulls and bears, but we're going to use the ATR today. So we're going to come in here and say ATR on the indicator. And remember, the autopilot goes off of arrows. So when it gets an arrow, that's when it executes. So those of you who are always yelling at me, just take the arrow land, just take the arrow. You can do that with the autopilot. <clears throat> now look, <clears throat> you guys always want me just to trade the, the ATR arrow and not use any filters. So let's do that. Let's, I can show you how you can do that. So we're gonna hit remove on the, on the um, moving average. No longer do we have a filter. No longer do we have a trend filter. We're just going to trade the arrows. Just trade the arrows, land. Just trade the arrows. Okay, let's do that. So we're going to come in here, trading quantity. We'll do quantity two because if we get in one, we can do a little, we can play with it ourselves too. We can jump in there. The autopilot doesn't care if you come in and start pillaring and pyramiding. You can do that once it gets you in. So we'll start with two so we can do a little pyramiding if we catch a trend. This is still the range bar 50, so it's kind of large. And the question is, should we should we just scalp and scalp or should we scalp and trail? Well, the autopilot doesn't let you scalp and trail. You have to do either scalp and scalp or you have to just do trail and trail. Which would you prefer? So it does one or the other. It doesn't do both. <clears throat> so we're going to do market order on signal. And we're going to come down here. We're on a range bar, so we don't need to worry about thrust bars. There are no thrust bars. You could do inactive market signal preventer, but... It's kind of weird because it's set up for minute charts, not for not for range bar. So let's leave that off. We're not going to take the trend. Trend is only if you have a filter, right? So we're just going to do both longs and shorts. We could just tell it to do longs only or shorts only if we had a bias. But we're going to just do longs and shorts. Should we leave it on range bar 50? Yeah, well, let's, let's yeah, let's read this. If we're going to leave it on range bar 50, let's just do the stop style. I'm going to put it up 40. That's $200. We're not going to use the jump stop, but we're going to trail on the ATR. And let's just trail it to break even. And then we'll say the the limit. We're not, should we do a scalp? Let's not. Let's just see if there's any trends. No, let's do a scalp on this one. You want to do a scalp? Yeah, let's do a scalp. Okay, so we'll scalp out 22 points. All right. And then we'll just exit on primary signal as our backup. We can do all kinds of neat stuff in here. Um, land, what's the right answer? Which is the best? Which is the one I should do? Well, there is no best, and there is no right answer. The only way we know the right answer is after the fact. Well, why don't you go do a bunch of backtesting? Don't you have historical backtesting capabilities, and we can backtest which is the best? Yes, we do. And what will happen is you will do some backtesting, and it will be based on thousands and thousands of trades, and then you'll trade it. <clears throat> three times and you'll say, Hey, it didn't do the same thing as the back test. Actually, it probably did. <laughs> it's just that you tested the back test against thousands and thousands of trade. And then you traded it three times myopically. You didn't let it go thousands and thousands of trades. Therefore your actual trading isn't going to have any results of what you had with your, with your back test. You can't trade like that. You have to, you're, we're not institutions. We're not going to turn these things on and let them run for 42 years. We're going to trade this thing very aggressively with one or two signals, and then we're going to be happy and turn it off. Your back testing stuff, you've got better knowledge up here than what that back testing can tell you. Yeah, but Len, I want to know which is better. Should I have it on a, uh, a stop or a limit of 22, or should I have it on a stop or a limit of uh, 
uh, two uh, uh, of 20 or uh, 19. You know what? It's not going to make any difference in your two trades. So just do it and you're going to get maybe different results. They're not going to be better or worse. They're just different. So that's how it works. I know I got back testing. Yes, we have back testing capabilities. Why don't you ever do them, Lan? Why don't you ever come in here, and run all the back tests for us? Because for this type of trading, I've learned that it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Just trade. Just trade. Just you have knowledge. You know what you want it to do. You know what it can do. Sometimes it's good to do it this way. Sometimes it's good to do it that way. We think it's going to do this. So we set it up in here and let it run a couple of times based on what we're seeing on the screen, what kind of indicators we got. Let's just do it. Just trade it. Just trade it. Don't get all worried about the historical backtesting. We'll get into that. I'll show you some of that. I'll show you how to do it. But for now, let's just get comfortable with the autopilot and what it's doing. Let's go ahead and we're going to hit start on this thing because we got an arrow going to come up here. As soon as that hits the range bar 50, that thing's going to throw a signal and it's going to take a short on us. Stochastics is way in the upper region. You could turn it on and off. That's what David Duty does. He'll set it all up. Then when he sees something on the screen that he likes, boom, he turns it on and just lets the autopilot take it over from there. And then when he's made his trade, boom, he turns it back off and then waits again. Like I said, it's like watching paint dry to watch David Duty trade. But hey, he makes money. All right. <clears throat> so let's come in here. Take a look at what's going on. Okay, so we got the NASDAQ up and running. Well, what are you going to do, Lan, over here on the S&P? You're going to put an option on? Well, we can come and put an option on. This is a 15-minute chart on the option. And it's coming up here and testing all these all-time highs or these previous highs. Looks like it's trying to break through. doesn't want to really go. We might get a, uh, a reversal here, and the market might flush back down. Or it might continue higher. Which do you want to take? You want to take a long position? Or you want to take a short position? Or do you want to... Take a neutral position. Let's do it. We could do both. <laughs> we can do both. That's a pretty cool idea. How about that? Do we think it's going to continue to rally? Yeah. Let's let's just say, hey, we got three arrows in a row, three different indicators. Not that that's a, you know, they're all kind of the basically the same math model. So you're going to basically get the same answers. So, yeah, we think the market's going to go rally today. Do we think it's going to be bullish today? Let's just say yes. But it might not. It might fall flush. So let's do this. Let's come into the options. And I got this cool little tool. I'm going to see if it works. I'm going to see if it works here. Watch this. Oh, I need to. That didn't work. Hold on. You still with me? Still with me? Here we go. Watch this. I got this little tool up in here. I see if I can make it work. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom. All right, check that out. All right, can you guys see better now? Somebody tell me over in the window, does that help? Because my screen's all screwed up. I don't know if it's working or not. Do you guys see the screen better? Okay, let's put on an option. Ooh, my mouse is really slow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Okay, we're going to come in here and we're going to select... Okay, bear with me while we're in this zoom in mode. So you guys, I'm trying to make it so you can see the see the screen a little better because I have people complain that they can't see what's going on. So we're going to buy a call. And we're going to drop that in there and we're going to buy a call. And that's $417 and I'm going to buy a put. So we're going to put on a straddle. I'm going to put on a straddle. And that one is $430. So let's go ahead and we're just going to mark it into that, put that on. We could bid for it, but we're not going to waste time doing that, especially when zoom mode. Okay, we got our straddle and strangle. But let's say we're bullish. I'm bullish on the market. I think the market's going to go up throughout the day. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to buy a call. I'm going to buy just a little bit out of the money. It's $212. So if we're right, we're going to make lots of money to the upside because we got two long calls, right? But we only have one long put. So the long put, will if the market does actually rally will actually let's see is that where we want that is there one closer there is one closer that one's 217 that one's 142 205 let's go with that one no 205 205 i just heard a ding two cent yeah let's go let's go with this one okay we're gonna buy that call land why'd you pick that one because it was two strikes away from our at the money. Oh, look at the market fall just as we got in. 
I haven't got into that call yet. Let's give it a second. It's already dropped in value. It's that market pulled back a little bit. Look at it pull back. Look at it pull back. Look at it pull back. So our puts making money. Our calls losing money. Look at it pull back. Pulling back. Pulling back. Pulling back. Ooh, look at it fall. Good thing I haven't put that long long call on yet. There it goes, starting to go up. We'll put it on right now. There we go. So we got that thing for a hundred bucks. All right, rock and roll. Okay, so now we've got a long call. It's just naked, it's just sitting out there in case the market rallies. We'll make money. We also put on a straddle. So the straddle, <clears throat> we can't see because let's see if we can move this thing down. Uh, and I got to come over here to positions. Sorry, the mouse is really slow. All right, we're making thirty-five dollars on the single call because it's starting to rally. We're only losing five dollars on our on our straddle, strangle, straddle, straddle, strangle, our strangle. So, all right, let's see if we can get this thing back to normal. I'm I'm really having. I hope that helps you guys see that a little better. But I'm having a hard time here, so I got to turn that off. All right, there we go. Bring it back down to normal, normal size. There it is. Okay. Well, that was kind of a, didn't work very good, but we'll give it a shot here. All right. So we're up $35 on our long call. That market's already starting to pull back up a little bit. We got that thing in there. We only paid $100 for it. It's worth 135, so we're up 35 dollars. So that's good. That's good. That's our that's our options. So we can just leave that now. We don't have to do any. Oh, we made 140 dollars. Look at that up there. Realized gains 140. Closed position. We made uh, 297s, which is uh, got to be our autopilot. That's got to be our autopilot. Let's go see. Is that Nasdaq? Yes, it was. And the Russell, we lost 55 on our little initial foray into the market. Okay, so that was the NASDAQ. Just made us some money on that little reversal right there. So that's just operating on its own. So we got that shoved over here to the side. Could you guys see that or was my stupid face in the way? We're up $62 on that uh, on our straddle strangle. What's going on here? Okay, the Dow's starting to pull back. The Russell, oh, the Russell is falling. This is the one, the NASDAQ is the one we just made the money on. That That yellow arrow right there is the one that just made the money in the autopilot. While we were dinking around with our options, the autopilot was still trading in the background and made us some money. Just trade the arrows, land. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're just trading the arrows on the NASDAQ. What about the Russell? Just trade the arrows on the Russell lane. Just trade the arrows on the Russell. Turn on the autopilot land. You're such a rotten trader. Why don't you just use the autopilot? Okay. You think I'm a rotten trader? Let's do that. All right. We're going to come in here and we're going to come in and we're going to say ATR period of one, stop factor of nine. Same thing we're doing on the other one, only this time we're on a range bar 10 instead of on a range bar 50. Should we see how that works out for us? Let's come in here to the autopilot. And should we scalp and trail or should we just scalp and scalp? I'm going to come in here and we're going to do the Russell ATR swing trade. That's what it's set up for now. So we're going to use the ATR trade quantity two, market order, thrust bar signal preventers. We don't need those. Longs. Should we take both longs and shorts or should we use a filter? We can use a filter. Look, see that VWAP? See how we always love the VWAP, right? We love and we hate the VWAP both. It's a love-hate relationship with that ugly blue line. All right. So what we can do is we come into the VWAP. And with the VWAP, we can actually turn on a buy-sell signal. So we can say displayed. All right, so what happens with the VWAP is it's got these blue arrows. See these blue arrows? That's if the market crosses above the VWAP, well, then you get an up arrow. If the market crosses below the VWAP, you get a down arrow. So anytime the market, if it goes back and forth across the VWAP, you get whipsawed to death. 
So if you if the market is below the VWAP, we got a down arrow. So it's all down below the VWAP right now. So the Russell is saying, hey, the market is bearish. So you could use the VWAP and you could say over here in the autopilot, come back over to the autopilot, and we could say we want to come down and we want to take the trend. What do you want to take the trend of land? We want to take the trend of the Russell, the RTYH24, which fortunately in track and trade, you don't know what all that means because we actually do say Russell 2000 mini March 2024 contract. And we talked about that yesterday, right? So we're going to use the RT, which stands for Russell. And we're going to come in here and we're going to use the uh, trend of the VWAP. So if you turn about the trend of the VWAP, you're going to only take down arrows because, right? The theory is that if the market is below the VWAP, we're in a downtrend. If the market is above the VWAP, we're in an uptrend. So if you're above the VWAP, you'd only take buy signals. If you're below the VWAP, you'd only take sell signals. That's kind of the theory. But we all know that sometimes the market goes way down below the VWAP, right? Turns way down here. The VWAP's way up here. And then the market comes shooting all the way back up to the VWAP, right? The VWAP acts like a rubber band. So it pulls it back all the way back up to VWAP. And you miss, if you did that strategy, you would miss that whole big return rate drive back up to the VWAP. So by using the trend of the VWAP, which is very laggy and stays behind the market quite significantly far, and you want to use the trend of that, you'd miss that whole return. Do you care? Oops. Back test it, Land. Back test it. Nah, it's not going to do you any good to back test it. You just have to say it's what I want to do or I don't want to do that. So we're going to come in here, and I don't know if I want to do that because that because it's all the way down here, and it's going to probably go back to the VWAP, and we'd miss that whole run because we say, well, if it's below the VWAP, we're only going to take short positions. Now that would have been good in two cases, right? It would have been good here. We'd have only taken that one. We'd have only taken this one. We'd have missed this one, which could have possibly made some money, especially if we were just scalping a couple hundred bucks out, right? Same with that one. That one would have been a good little scalp to the backside. So you say, well, man, you're going to reduce and only use 50% of the arrows, but in the long downs. Well, if we were going to be um, trailing down the yellow lights, we'd have probably made more money if we'd have done that than on the scalp back forth, just taking $200 off each one, right? Which is better, Land? Which is better? Well, Sometimes one's better, sometimes the other one's better. I don't know all the answers, just most of them. So we're going to come in here, and I'm not going to do the trend. I'm going to say no trend. I'm just going to take longs and shorts. Okay, and I'm going to put my stop in there at 22. We're going to just do scalp and scalp, and we're going to do the ATR until break even with a limit of 22, which is going to actually jump right to the, oh, this is the stop, is going to jump right to the ATR and start to trail. Trail to break even, and then we're going to get out. Uh, should we trail to break even? No, let's not. Let's continue to trail. If it wants to trail into profit zone, let it trail into profit zone. And then we're going to tick out at 22. And then if it starts to rally and we see that it's going to you know, hit our limit order and we want to change that, we can. So we can come in here because the autopilot doesn't care if you start to manually trade once it puts you into a position. So we'll save that and we'll start our autopilot on the Russell. All right, Land, now you've got auto trading going on on the NASDAQ. you got auto trading going on on the Russell. And you've got options on the S&P. The only thing you got left to do on your own is the Dow. Okay. Well, it doesn't mean that we're completely abandoning the Russell because we might completely abandon the NASDAQ. We probably don't want to change that one much because it's range bar 50. What does that have to do with it? Okay, you're right. You you can still jump in and change things anytime you want. If you think it's going to rally hard rather than just taking both of them off, because we're going into two contracts. If we take them both off at the limit, we would just jump out of the trend. But we can change that as it gets in. We can change it to quantity one and let the other one trail if we want to. Okay, so the Russell will do the same thing. So let's center those so they keep uh, focused. And then the only thing we got left is the Dow up here. And Lan, are you going to leave the Dow on the one-minute chart? You said you were going to put that over on the on a range bar 10. Should we, or should we look at it on a one minute chart? We got, this one's on a range bar 10 down here. Look at it drop land. You're missing it. You're missing it. Well, I turn it over to the autopilot. You want me to autopilot trade. Now you're telling me I should be getting in on this little drop right here. No, let the autopilot handle it. We can come and trade that up here on the Dow. Now we got one that we can trade on ourselves on the Dow. 
See if we can outperform the autopilot in the option. See if we're better traders than the autopilot. All right. You should have turned the autopilot on sooner, Land. Look at those beautiful trends that you missed. You missed that whole thing. You could have made a lot of money in the Russell if you'd have been paying attention, but you weren't paying attention. And then you went and put it on the autopilot. And the autopilot is now trading way after all the good signals. You could have made money. But now, look, you're losing this whole thing. You could have had this big downtrend. What's going on with our uh, what's going on with our S P? How come it's it's still at a profitable zone? The whole market's down. Why are we taking a long position on the S P? You're at $22 land. Take it off. Just get it off of there because the market's not going to be bullish today. You can get it off still at break even. You're going to have this thing be a big loser if you hang on to that too long. If the market turns and flushes, 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 you're going to lose money on your options. Take them off right now, Lane. Just take them off while, before you lose a whole bunch of money. <clears throat> we could do that. How much are we losing up here on our... How much are we losing on our option up here? $15 is all we're losing. $12. Oh, we're still making $12 on our option, on our long call. Should we just get rid of that just in case the market wants to, but we can put it back on. Let's liquidate that one. Just as a, well, you know what? Just as you sell that thing, the market's going to turn and go back up again. It's just giving a pullback and it's going to go along again. How do you know that? I don't. I'm just you know, making my best guess, making a swag, a scientific wild ass guess. That thing's going to come and turn your little ABC in here and rally back up. No, you're wrong. Now you're down money. You're losing money, land, land. You're losing, you're losing money. You should have got rid of it when you said to get rid of it. You can always put it back on land. You always put it back on. Cancel the liquidation. We should buy another one right now. We should buy another long call right now. They're cheap. They're hundred dollars. Buy a call. Oh, that one would be expensive. Three hundred dollars. And it'd be a hundred and fifty dollars. Whoa, we really got that one at a good price. We got it at a hundred bucks. No wonder it's only down seven five dollars now. Three ten. That's an expensive call. At the money is four hundred and thirty bucks. Uh, let's sit on that one for a second. Let's watch that one. We're going to come in here and look at the Dow. Let's change the Dow up. All right. I know. I know. We'll take it off the one minute chart and go over to the range bar just for fun. Put it on a range bar ten. Ooh, look at all those lines on the screen. So high Kanashi, it is. Is that going to be helpful or not? What about a range bar eight? No high Kanashi. Turn on your high Kanashi. Is that better? I think range bar eight's a little better than range bar 10 on the Dow here. A little, little smoother, a little cleaner. We don't need these. Let's get rid of these moving averages. They're in the way. Bulls and bears. Let's turn those off for now. Oh, it's a little... Uh, what's our... We're at one and 1.5. <clears throat> so we play with the ATR a bit. Let's change that down. Let's put it on one and one and just see what it looks like. Oh, that doesn't look bad. Land, just turn the autopilot on. <laughs> well, if I did that, then I wouldn't be have anything to do. I'd just sit here with you guys and watch. Uh, don't you want me to trade? Don't you want me to trade too? All we do is watch the autopilot. It's not doing anything. It's just yesterday I turned the autopilot on. It took one trade. Did it win? Yes, it won. Well, what are you complaining about then? Look, there's our short position on the Dow. Everything's falling. We'll see if it wants to continue to fall. Of course, as soon as we get in, as soon as land takes a position, that's when it turn and go the other way. That's Murphy's Law, right? Okay, we're going to see if it'll just go to the next even number. That's not an even number. You haven't got those set up right. Come in here. Chart preferences. Fixed amount, boom, boom, boom. Run those up. Let's do this right, land, do it right. Get it up there to 50, 37, 38, 39, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 
We're up $140. We have open profit of $80, and we have a total uh, in this market. Oh, we're making, got our position in. We're making a dollar, $5. Oh, now we're down $10. Oh, now we're up. Oh, now we're down 5 Oh, now we're up 5 It's right there at the strike. Oh, look at our Russell. Russell's curling around. We went long on the Russell. Ooh, the autopilot put us in long on the Russell. Do we like that place? of trying to catch that reversal. Reversal trading land, reversal trading. It's a dangerous, dangerous game. Look, our Dow making a little money. Oh, we went, only went in with one. Of course you only went in with one land. You're a chicken. You're a chicken. We're trailing down. We've got our stop all trailed down. Is it going to trail? It's just going to trail to break even. Oh, it's going to come back and stop us out. Oh, don't do that. Well, we got one long, one short. So I guess whichever way it goes, we're going to make one and lose one. So we just lost on the Russell. And I had two contracts. We lost enough. Look, that took our realized profit all the way down to negative 25. Well, that really sucks. What'd you do over here in your option, man? You didn't liquidate that call like I told you to do. I know. But we got the put in there making money. And that call option, we got it for such a good price. I got a good deal on it. We're doing good on the Dow. Yeah, but only with one contract. It's not that good anyway. It's going to come back right here. Come on, take off your break even. Trail, 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 ATR. How come you're not trailing? Trailing ATR. Okay. Oh, baby. It's going to come back and stop us out, too. Just take it off right now. Take your $15, land. Take your $15. <clears throat> you know it's going to hit your stop. Just take it off right now. Get the 15 Oh, you should have just done what I said. I told you. Take it off. It's going to hit your stop. Oh, look at the look at the Russell. First rally, pull back. There you go. There's your sign. Remember, I always say, don't take the first arrow. Wait for a pullback. Take the second one. Can't do that on the autopilot. Autopilots can only take the arrow. I should have been paying attention. We could have done that here. What, what are you going to do? Ah, ah, ah. Go long, land. Go long. Go long, land. That's the arrow. First one. Let's wait. Let's let it see if it wants to settle down and then go on a second arrow on this one. Yeah, I already missed it on the Russell. Oh, man, you're not. Oh, I'm so disappointed in you. So disappointed in you. It's not me. Don't be disappointed in me. Be disappointed in the market. Well, you're the one that's not trading the market very well. I got the autopilot. I turned the autopilot on. I saw the next signal. I didn't take it. I know it's my signal. First arrow, first red candles, first green candle, make a new high after the red candles. We can still trade, even though the autopilot's turned on. The autopilot's only going to take the arrows. You keep telling me, just take the arrows, land. Just take the arrows. So I am. I just taking the arrows. But the autopilot's doing that for me. So now if I want to trade independently, I still can. I can still do it. Now, if the if the market breaks below and holds below this arrow, or this yellow dot, it'll throw another yellow arrow to the short side. But this is could be just that pullback we're looking for, right? Just give us a little pullback and then turn and rally. But who's to say it's going to rally? It could just come down here and just boom, go sideways and die on us. And if that happens, then we get our heinies handed to us. No heiny handing. Please, no heiny handing. Look, we're getting a break right here. Boom, there's your signal land. There's your sign. Okay, let's watch that baby run, run, run to the moon. All the way back to the VWAP. Where's your VWAP land? You haven't even got it turned on. My goodness sakes. Oh, the VWAP's right where it's at. <laughs> it's breaking above the VWAP right now. Probably going to fail. Yep, it failed. Failed to break above the VWAP. Coming back down, touched us out. Go short, land. Go short. I don't have to. We got the autopilot. Oh, no, we don't have the autopilot on this one. We got the rally. 
Man, we're getting our heinies handed to us with these autopilots. Look, we're down $500. We just hit our daily loss. Our daily max loss. Didn't that one make money? That one. Didn't the Russell make money? No, it didn't. How come it didn't make money? I have to go back and look at the video on that one. That looks like a winner right there. I don't understand how come that one didn't make money. Oh, look at these things. Oh, look at these. Oh, lay in. Why didn't you get in right there? You said you were going to get in right there because I was got distracted. Distracted trading. Distracted trading. Who is it that's always telling us about don't get distracted trading? Don't do distracted trading. What the heck? All right. Come on. Come on, baby. Rock and roll for us. There's a green bar. Range bar eight. We got to get some. Oh, look, that Russell was beautiful. Had all of our perfect setups, and we missed all of them. Lost money on every single one of them. That's embarrassing. Come on, finish out there. Range bar eight. Click it, click it, click it. There we go. Can you get in? Yeah, you can get in now, Lan. You're just going to get stopped out. Why'd you get in? Because I had a red to green, and it looks like it's going to go up. We'll put on the second one then. <laughs> Why do you want to put in the second one? It's being weak. It's not trending. It's on a little pullback. Put it in. It's very little risk. And if it goes, you'll have two contracts on the pullback. But I could also get stopped out with two contracts, lose even more money. This market's not going anywhere. It's dying on us. No, it's not. Look at the Russell. You missed that trade on the Russell. You even pointed it out and said you was going to take it, and then you didn't do it right there. You'd have been long the Russell right now, and you'd have been rich, rich, rich beyond your wildest dreams. Castling, you'd be pillaring, you'd be pyramiding. My gosh, why didn't you just pay attention to one market? Just land. Just watch one market. Quit trying to do too many things on too many markets. Oh, well, I'm a good, bad example. Hopefully people are learning what not to do. How's that? Watch LAN and you can learn, learn exactly what you're not supposed to do. And you'll be a good trader. Just do whatever LAN doesn't do. <laughs> I've been a really good, bad example today. Well, at least our options coming back. Oh. No, it's not. We're only up to, we're down $10 on our options. <clears throat> volatility is kind of significantly dropped. Our implied volatility just fell out of the, fell out of bed. Look at the NASDAQ. That, I don't understand how come we didn't make money on that NASDAQ. Did we have our stop so close that we got nailed on it? I don't understand. That should have been a winner right there. Two contracts long. And it says we lost money on it. I'm not sure what happened. Our stop must have been too too tight. Two hundred dollars is our stop. All it is. How much is two hundred dollars? Ooh, that's why. Ooh, bad news, bears, land. Your stop on the Nasdaq fifty is too tight. Okay, well let's go fix that. Let's go over to the autopilot. Stop the autopilot. Come down here. Put our stop further back. So we only went two hundred. It's got to jump to the blue lights. Let's give it. Let's give it uh, 80 ticks, 400, and then it'll jump to the yellow dots. That's a lot bigger market we're trading over there, so we can't have it quite so tight. Do a David Duty and put it at $400. That's still 400. All right. Scary. Save, start. If we'd had our stop set properly, we would have been a nice winner there. Oh, look, the autopilot just took that arrow. I wish it wouldn't have. <laughs> oh, well, we'll trade an autopilot. Let's see what happens. Then we're down $600. 
Everything we made yesterday, we got blown out today. Just trade the autopilot, you said. Just trade the autopilot. Just trade the arrows, you said. Just trade every arrow, you said. You said just trade every arrow. So the autopilot trades every arrow. <clears throat> Didn't quite work out the way we thought it would, did it? Okay, the Dow's starting to rally, breaking above the previous high. Should we take a long there? Let's not take the long until we prove that it's going to go. Let's get ourselves a rally and then a little pullback and look for the next leg up. <clears throat> so I want to see a break out of this narrow sideways channel first. Just got stopped out on the Russell down there on the autopilot again. It went short. Ugh. Just take the arrow, Lynn. Just take the arrow. How many times have I told you the arrow is not the buy signal? The arrow is the direction of the market. We're in a bullish market. What is the buy signal? The buy signal is the break above the red to the green. Red to green. Red to green. Red to green is the signal, not the arrow. Now, this was not, but this is a down arrow. So we don't have, so it's red to green to red. Green to red going this direction. Take it again then, Lynn. That's your signal. Well, it's not red yet. It could still go green. Let's wait. Wait till that becomes red. If it does, we'll take a short position on it. Nothing's happening right now. Everything's slowing down. There it goes. 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 Come on. Come on, baby. See, look at that narrow sideways channel up there on the Dow. Let's kill all that drawing tools and we'll just draw our narrow channel in there. Draw your narrow channel in there, Land. Okay, I will. Right there. You going to knock off those highs and lows? Yeah, kind of. How about along those yellow lines? There we go. Which direction is it going to go out of that thing? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> that's, a, that's a dumb question. I don't know which way it's going to go out of there. Everything is down, so I'm going to guess down. Okay, We'll make a scientific wild-ass guess if the market's going to fall out of the bottom of this thing. Why? Well, because everything's been going down so far. It'll probably just continue down. You got a buy arrow there. Well, then it could go out the top. What are you going to do? Wait and see. We don't want to take the breakout. We want to wait for it to first go. Give us three, four, five nice flat bottom bars, a little pullback, and then that's our signal, right? What if it goes the other way? Well, wait for it to go three, four, five flat bottom bars. Wait for it to pull back, and then that'll be our signal, right? We'll go that way. You don't want to take the breakout? No, I don't like to take breakouts. Why not? Because there's so many false breakouts. False breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout. Every time you try to take a breakout, breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout, you get your hiney handed to you. So wait for it to break out in the first place. Choose a direction that it wants to go. And then if it gives you a signal to continue, then you'll take the signal to continue. But remember, oftentimes we get a breakout and then the market flushes the other way or we get a breakout to the downside and the flush the other way. Oh, I don't need to make this too complicated, Lane. I don't know what to do. Just turn on the autopilot. Well, we did just turn on the autopilot. We turned on the autopilot down here. Now we're down $830. We should have not turned on the autopilot. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Well, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <clears throat> it's not as hard as it looks. I mean, it's, it's harder than it looks. It's, it's not harder than it looks. Yes, it is, Lane. It's, it's harder than it looks. Just take the red to greens, land. Just take the red to greens. Well, easier said than done. We'll just do that every time. We'll just, you know, if we're in an up arrow, we'll only take the red to green. A red to green. If we're in a down arrow, we'll only take the green to red. Green to red. Why didn't you do it right there, land? Look, there was your signal. Green to red after the arrow. Why didn't you take it? You'd be short right now. Because I was focused on the Dow, looking at a breakout, and I missed that one. Can't you do three things at once, Lane? Well, I am. I'm doing three things at once. I got an option going on up in the upper left-hand corner. 
Those are my options. I got a long call and I got a straddle. Straddle or a strangle? Uh, this is a straddle. And then down here in the NASDAQ, I got the range bar 50 running on the autopilot. And then over here on the Russell, I got the autopilot going to take all the arrows because you keep yelling at me, just take the arrows, man. Just take the arrows. So I'm just taking the arrows, but I got the autopilot doing that for me. And then I'm trying, trying. Move that limit order out. That was a scalp and scalp, and I moved the limit order. Might be a good idea, might not be a good idea. Might be mad at me for taking that arrow out here in just a second, saying, you should have just scalped, you should have just scalped. But I'm going to see if it won't go just a little farther than the scalp. That was a decision that I made. Well, it was probably the wrong decision. Should have probably just scalped. Well, I got two. I can scalp and trail if I want to. How would you do that if you're going to scalp and trail? Well, I'd have to kill this OCO. So let's do that. We're going to kill the OCO. We're going to come in here, right click. <clears throat> Actually, I can't put an OCO because that's two, two, That's a single single ticket order with too long. So what I have to do is I put a limit order in here, which is not attached. I can put that in there wherever I want. Let's say we're going to put that right there. We can come in and put it real close. Okay, we took one off. All right, so there's our scalp. Now we can trail. What are you going to trail on, Land? Well, I can trail one price bar back, which is a little bit more aggressive on the ATR, on the, excuse me, on the Hike and Ashes, or I can put it on the ATR and just trail out on the ATR dots. But I got the autopilot running. So if the market crosses back over the ATR dots, the autopilot will automatically take that off for me and put me in the other direction. So this one I could just trail, but I have to put a dead stop on. So I'm going to put in a stop and then come in here, hit edit, and then I'm going to just trail on price bars back and we'll just go one price bar back and so you can see that one's actually making a little profit <clears throat> so you scalped and now you're trailing yes scalping we took the first scalp off and now we're going to trail the second one up and see if we can't make a little bit more money than what the scalp would have made but the market's going to have to trend it's going to have to make a nice big long trend all the way up to that blue up, blue light up that blue line that magic rubber band but what if it comes back and pulls back a couple of times in between there well then we'll probably get stopped out question is will our stop make it above where our where we put our limit and scalped out that would be the break even or the this where the trail made more money or at least as much money as the scalp that's why david duty likes to scalp because oftentimes the trail doesn't trail even though you trail and mark goes higher the trail doesn't get up above the scalp level it's got to have a nice long move and get above the scalp level to make more money than the scalp would have made right now the scalp would have still made more money than where we're currently trending even though the market's much higher we'll take it off right now man just take it off right now do a scalp and scalp just a higher scalp you could do that but do we want to see if it's going to go all the way up to the blue lines is you're risking your open profits what you're doing to see if you can make more money it's a game you have to play. You have to decide where are you going to take the money off? Where are you going to take it off? Where are you going to take it off? You're going to let it run. You're going to try and let it run for go for a longer move. Or are you just going to scalp it and take off the first little hundred, 200 bucks out of the bottom? David Duty's chosen just to take off the little 200 bucks out of the bottom. But then he misses. Sometimes the market goes to the moon, right? And he misses all those big, long three, four, or $5,000 moves. But he's okay with that. He doesn't care. I'm not okay with it. I want to do it. I want to catch the $3,000 move. If I don't have a strategy, people always ask me, Land, how can I make $5,000 a day? Well, does your strategy allow for you to make $5,000 a day? What's your strategy? Oh, well, I scalp and scalp. Well, if you're scalping scalp, your strategy never makes you $5,000 a day. You can't catch a big long runner if you're scalping $100 out every time you get into a trend. Unless you, you know, put on 25 contracts and then try to scalp out the first hundred dollars with 25 contracts then you can make a big chunk of money of course if you get stopped out with that then you get your hiney handed to you and you have to walk away with your tail between your legs it's a real balancing act that's why i call this thing a circus it's a circus man it's all just one big circus you're only long with one contract land you should be long with two i scalped one out and besides, our stop still has not got to the point where the scalp would have been more profitable. 
Well, maybe it has. Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Yeah, I guess it is. We're up $200, right? Well, $200 is where the market's currently trading. That's not where the stop's at. Can you make that an OCO? I could. It's going to get pulled back. It's going to stop you out, Lance. It's going to stop you out. Yeah, but look how close that is to the... That's a pretty good trade. Get rid of this line. I think that almost made as much money as if we'd have just scalp and scalped. That trailing stop got us in there. If it stops us out right there. So 140. Yeah, a little bit more. The scalp and scalp would have been 100 because we scalped out 100, right? Is that what we scalped out? Scalped out. Closed. It's the Russell. 135. Oh. So if we do anything less than 135 with that trailing stop, we'd have been better off scalping and scalping. And we're at 125, 130. So if it stops us out with 125, we'd have been better off to scalp and scalp. Anything less than 130, scalp and scalp would have been better. There it goes. It's 185, man. Take it, take it. Just take it, take it. You know it's going to turn around and just come back and stop you out anyway at 130. Take it. Take the 200. Why didn't you add in? Why aren't you adding in right now, Lynn? You could add in right now. Yeah, I could. You going to take it back off? You going to castle? Are you going to castle, Lynn? Come on. I know you want to castle. Castle it, Lynn. Castle it. Take it. Okay. How much did you just take off? Half of it. Close position, Russell. Russell chart chart only ninety two dollars. So that castle took another ninety two. So we're one thirty five plus ninety two. We're still long. The market's running. Add another one in, land. Add another one in right now. Do it. You know it's going to go to the blue line. Add another one in. I don't want to. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay. Our stop is now not above our entry. So if we get stopped out. We're going to get stopped out with a loss. Large screen land. Everybody's having a hard time seeing what you're doing down there. We caught a runner. There it goes. There it goes. Go. You know it's going to the blue line. I know, but it might pull back one. It did right there, and you took a second one. You're so smart. Sometimes I think you're good at this. Other times I think you suck. I do. I do both. Sometimes I'm good. Sometimes I'm not. <laughs> It's the nature of the beast. If the market would just do exactly what we want it to do every single time, then we'd be really good at this. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't do exactly what we want it to do. Are you going to take it at the at the blue light? Are you going to put a limit order in there? Why not? Is it going to go all the way to the blue light? It might not. It might just go up right there, Lance. Suck your stop up in there just in case it drops back at this point. Well, we can. We could do that. There, we'll squeeze, pinch it. If it drops back, we'll just take them off. And if it goes up and hits the limit, we'll take it off. Watch this. We'll do this little trick. What's that going to do, Land? It's going to buy one and sell one, right? Bam, boom, bam. And we'll castle. Okay, so we're still long one. See? See that? So we took our one off at the limit, but what if it keeps going? What if it goes and breaks through the blue light and goes to the moon? We'd have been out and we'd cry, cry, cry the blues. So I put one on and took one off right at our target level. And we're still long one contract. See that? Oh, we're still long two. How come that didn't take one off? Oh, because I still have my stop. I want to sell one right now. Take some profit out of there. Sell market, sell market, sell market. Are you going to take one lane? You're going to take it? Take it. Watch the small chart up in the upper right corner. Watch the tiny chart. Watch the tiny chart. Boom. Take one off. <clears throat> Trail price bars one. Still long one contract. So instead of getting completely out of the market, <clears throat> I took my profits and got back in at the exact same price. So now I'm still in, even though I got out. You're still in, even though you got out. 
Yeah. Still in, even though I got out. Of course, that was supposed to take me out automatically. <laughs> that was a happy accident. Look, we're only down $300 now. We were down. We got $260 in open profit. So we're only down $100 as far as open profit is concerned. Of course, we all know open profit means nothing. You're going to lose it that fast. Man, add another one. It's breaking above the blue light. Add another one. Add another one. Okay. Break it above the previous high. My gosh, Lynn, you caught a runner. Good thing you're not David Duty. You'd only had $200. Now you have $300. <laughs> you caught a runner. We caught a runner. It's like the first time in 75 classes that we finally caught a runner, right? Okay, let's kill that one and take our money. What did we do? What did we do? Look at that. 135, 92, 50, 109, 179, 27, 12. That was a good trade. Lynn, you caught a runner the first time in 75 classes. You finally caught a runner. Oh, that's what it feels like, doesn't it? All right. We still got 275 down. And uh, let's see. Take a short, Lynn. Take the short. It's going to rebound. Take the short. Take the short. It hit the blue line. Now take the short. Maybe. Well, good. You stick one in there on the short position and anticipate a drop back. Might, but of course it might just go this way too. And you just lose a bunch, a bunch trying to take a stupid trade. Why is that a stupid trade? Well, because it's not a signal. It's just kind of like, oh, I think it's going to turn around and go back down. Wait for a signal. What's your signal? Well, we're still in an uptrend. So red to green, red to green. What if we get red to green right there? Well, we just had a really long trend, so the market will probably chop around a little bit up in here. Doesn't mean it's going to make a V recovery. V recovery would be just a straight down drop now, come right back. Sometimes the market does that. Sometimes it does. But usually, more often than not, it just kind of comes up here and wanders sideways for a little bit. Those guys bought all those shares. They wanted them. Came back to the VWAP. Well, take the short land. Take the short. One contract. Come on, just put one contract on there for me. Just, I just, I just wanted one contract on the rebound. Come on, you could have done that for me. I know, I know. Wait and see. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You know it's going to come all the way back down to the Fibonacci sweet spot. You're going to put the Fibonacci sweet spot, and you're going to watch that thing come back, and it's going to come all the way back down into this. Oh, the autopilot just did it for you. Yeah, and the autopilot hasn't had a winning trade all day because it just goes off the arrows. It doesn't go from red to green. It goes off the arrows. And you keep telling me, just take the arrows, Land. Just take the arrows. If this thing loses, I'm going to be... I'm going to be mad. Really, really mad. Because I didn't want to be short right here. You know it's going to go down into that Fibonacci sweet spot. This is going to make you a lot of money. That autopilot, it's going to, I told you just, I told you, Land, don't take that short position. You're just going to get stopped out if you take the short position right here because the market's just going to go sideways. I told you that it's not going to go back down to the Fibonacci sweet spot. You're short right there on the arrow. Why did you let the autopilot do that to you? You knew it wasn't going to go down there. You knew it wasn't going to go down there. You even drew a little box up there, said it's going to stay in the box. What's it going to do? Is it going to go to the sweet spot or is it going to go up and stop you out? Well, which one makes me money? Go to the sweet spot. Well, then it's not going to do that. <laughs> it's not going to do whatever makes me money. There, stop me out. I told you. Turn off that stupid autopilot. How do you turn it off? You got to go over to the autopilot tab and you got to hit stop trading. But the autopilot made you money yesterday. I know, but now look, we're back down to 420 bucks. What about that one? The NASDAQ. Well, we haven't got a signal. It's on the range bar 50, so it's really slow. 
Those guys bought all those shares. They don't want to give them up. That's why they bought them. They wanted them. You knew it was going to go back to the blue line, man. You knew it was going to go back to the blue line. Delete. Deleted. Okay, let's see. Well, what's our options doing? We're still down $72 on our options. Look, our long call that's way up here, this out-of-the-money call, is up 35 bucks. But our, our straddle is the one that's losing money. We'll leave that on. Where do you want to take it off, Lan? At what level? Let's go in here and put an order to take it off. So we'll liquidate the multi-leg. I'm not going to use the zoom, zoom, zoom tool because it's too hard. So we're going to come in here. See this net loss right here? It says it's down 102 bucks. That's where we're sitting right now. But I don't want to take it off at a loss. So I'm going to run this up. And I'm going to say take it off at... We still got time. It's early. We're only one hour into a seven-hour trading day. So we got some time for this mark to rally. So we're going to put it up here and say if it makes $100, that'd be 10%, $85. Let's say 10%. We'll be conservative. It makes 10%, which is $85. Bucks. We're going to take that straddle off. All right? So we'll go ahead and we'll place order. Now watch. If I hit place order and it takes it off, I'm going to be mad. It didn't. Okay, I did it right that time. All right. So what about the long call? Should we do that too? We can liquidate the long call. And we say, if it makes us, it's, oh, it's profitable already. If it makes us 25%, uh, $40, $50, let's say $50, that'd be 50%. That's a lot of money. Make a 50% return on an out-of-the-money option. We may not want to think it's going to do that. Market have to rally pretty hard for that. 50%. Let's go back down to 30%. How about 25%? That's 25 bucks. So it makes 25 bucks to take it off. It's out of the money. Okay, let's do that. All right, let's go ahead and place that order. Okay, we got two pending orders to take those things off at like what we say. Now I forgot. 20%, 25%, something like that. Oh, wait. It just took it off. You dirty rotten bugger. Closed out our position, gave us $25. Oh, I guess I should have rested it higher. Well, there we go. Our long call that was sitting there empty, our long naked call just made us $25. It just took it off. Well, it'd be nice if they would take off our straddle strangle here too. Come on, straddle. Take it off. What did we say to take it off at? I can't remember. Okay, so it's down $100, and it's got to be profitable before it takes it off. So it's going to wait for it to rally. We're down $395 on the day. And the only thing I can do at this point now is just ask you guys to please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I did catch one good runner today, but we're still down $395. I'll let you know how things turn out with the options. Uh, certainly not going to make enough money to cover our losses so far on what the autopilot lost for us today. I still, I think, what do we got? We got, um, is the autopilot still running over on the, no, oh, yeah, the autopilot still running on the NASDAQ. I'll leave the autopilot running on the NASDAQ as long as the options are still running. As soon as the options come off, which might be all day, <laughs> might not come off or until I have to teach another class. Oh, look, Russell's starting to try to run long again above the VWAP. You want to take a long right there? Go ahead. The arrow, man. Might have been the only one the autopilot took a, <laughs> took a position on that would have won. <laughs> go long, Lynn. Go long. Go long. No, we're going to call it a day. Tired. We didn't have a good day. We're down $395 and $110 on our option. Right now. We're down 400 and almost 500 bucks. That's not good. We're starting out with a $10,000 account and we're down $500. Shake my head. All right, guys. We will catch you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.